Hello, I'm Paul Wilkinson and we're filming from Kathmandu where I'm making a couple of TV series on shamanism and on the festivals of Nepal. And at the moment I'm introducing a whole load of different ritual objects, um, saying a little bit about how they're made, how they're used. So today I'm showing a whole group of uh, printing blocks. Some of them are used for um, ritual, some of them are used for, for decoration, like sort of prints for homes, um, and others are for textiles. This is a ritual uh, printing block for Nag Panchami. So Na the Nagas are a sort of snake god which live in the earth and um, they govern health and illness and um, the energy of the earth, the vitality of water, the energy coming up through the chakras. So they would make prints from the blocks which they then put up above the doors of the houses in a ritual that's usually towards the end of July. Um, and the Nagas, you see, you've got a, a number of different designs here, where you've got one which, where it's one snake but divided into four, um, like the four directions. You have an eight-headed eight snake, um, a one-headed snake with different types of knot, a very large one at the bottom, a Nagini, so it's a snake goddess, where the body is uh, human or, or goddess, and the, the, with this long snake tail and then other other designs another one with one head and um, people bringing offerings with suns and moons a little bit of nettly writing here at the top so this would be printed and then they stick it up above the door with, using uh, cow dung and a little bit of cuss grass on, at the top so, and there's more writing which I'll have translated. So this is really a, a very interesting and, and quite rare piece. Um, nowadays they're just using commercial uh, printing. So, and there might be 50 different designs with different, different types of uh, knot. So the knot is often connected to being uh, to eternity and to the being true to your own pathway. Um, and the, the number of Nagas also relating to the numbers of, of chakras. Um, so a very, very interesting piece. And you can see on the back the sort of stains from, from ink from many, many years of use. And there's another, another one for Nag Panchami. Again, the Nepali writing is written in reverse so that when you print it, you can, um, it's then the right way. And you've got, again, fish, and sort of starfish, and maybe a, a, a sea animal here. And this one's got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight nagas. And that's again a sun and a moon. And on the back, another design. This time with a, a centipede, and a spider and a fish. So these things are seen as sort of connected to the underworld and to the to the earth. And Nagas are seen as sort of living inside the river rivers, um, living deep in the earth, guarding their treasure. And in terms of the energy system, they they're seen as bringing the vitality to the chakras. So that in shamanism, they're a very important symbol and actually very important under, as an underpinning uh, god in both Hinduism and in Buddhism and in um, even, even in things like yoga they, they come up with, in terms of the Kundalini so on the other end of the spectrum there are printing blocks designed to fit into each other for textiles so very very beautiful Mostly these have fallen out of use because you've got now sort of photographic printing. But they're amazing objects. You can see this one's pretty old with um, sort of traditional designs. And you see the, the edge around the is sort of so that they would fit into each other. Real.
variety. And you get printing blocks like this still across Asia, particularly in Indonesia, um, and still some parts of Nepal. But um, in maybe a hundred years ago, this would have been a common thing in, in West as well, um, where people were hand printing, laying out the fabric and uh, to produce sort of beautiful designs and then sometimes with multiple levels as well so you'd have them where different colors would fit into each other and uh, you, you lay out the um, you connect the different edges to the the next pattern and the next pattern so they fit together on the fabric this one i found recently and it's um, another naga design but very, very like sort of Celtic designs with uh, this sign with six, six, six different single-eyed Nagas. So I was a little bit unsure whether it was Nagas or whether it was some sort of Tibetan uh, design. And I think it's probably Nagas, but I'll have to double check that. So this is very, very different where it's instead of high relief, it's low relief. So, in the, with this one, the flowers would actually be uh, the, the bit that gets printed, and with this, everything else is printed, and the flowers actually in um, like the negative. So it's like a negative printing. Um, this is quite unusual, and uh, I've, I've not actually found one of these before. But very, very nice. It's a, a really really quite a beautiful object. You, you can see with this how the, the different shapes would fit into each other over a large design. Another piece with the uh, pineapples and sort of vines but possibly grapes. Really, uh, really quite wonderful and some sort of abstract designs it's very like water that's it's the way that um, the the Nepalese and the Tibetans often depict depict water so at some point I'll do some um, rubbings on this so if you if you put a piece of paper on and then you rub on the surface you can get the design and sometimes when you've got writing you, you, because it's written in, it's written backwards. So, if you, if you make a rubbing of it, then you can read the, um, you can read it more, more, much more easily. So, again, this is another, um, another one where the the main body is the bit that would be printed. So they'd use a, an ink tup roller to smoothly go over it and then they fit it fit it to the the you can see the circles here and then the circles there where it would be fitted again and again and again so they they can register it and and get their printing accurate and I'll show a few others more more flowering plants that one would probably be used for edging very nice nice object so the, I, I love these things. I've, I have a background in art. Um, so I started out as a painter and sculptor, and now filmmaking. But I'm I'm still painting and sculpting. So I I absolutely love all these sort of hand handmade objects. Now this is very unusual because it's um, Chinese or Japanese design, and it actually has. Uh, you can see the it's probably two two immortals. Um, you see an old man here, another old man talking, and you, you can tell the Chinese be, because of this space. So the chi in Chinese design, you have these incredible uses of space and form, empty space, and these diagonals. So they use the diagonals in order to set the space up. So, um, and very, very sort of classical use of carving for pine trees, and, and this is probably a setting sun. Um, 
It'd be very nice to print that up. But I found that in a Kathmandu antique shop. Um, it's possible that it's been taken from a, a Chinese or Tibetan design and then um, and then carved here, or it's possible that it's come from China. So I have another. I was very surprised to find these. This is an, another uh, Chinese design, and you can see again the use of the the contrasting shapes. This very sort of typical Chinese. Um, crosswork design for the architecture. Um, I mean, formerly very, very sophisticated um, and nice to actually have the wood blocks. The actual print, printing from things like this are now pretty valuable. So the blocks themselves, it, it's really wonderful to have. And you can see through the doorway, the trees from a, a distant landscape and then uh, the women in their kimonos, three women in their kimonos, and a man with a, a eating looks like a, an apple or a peach on the on the table, and these very beautiful uses of space and pattern design. So re really quite something. And a little bit of writing here and writing here in Chinese. So I need to have that um, translated. And then one more, which was. It looks like a samurai, but it could also be it could be Tibetan or it could be Chinese. I'm guessing it's probably Chinese. Um, riding on his horse, again, very very nice use of space with the pine pine tree. Still some traces of ink. Um, the antique dealer thought that they were probably about 70 years old. Um, it's very difficult to to know with these sorts of things, but the 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 craftsmanship's absolutely wonderful. I mean, really, very, very sophisticated. And um, you can see the the guy with the bow. Actually, having the, the the design of the bow would also allow you to date the the design of the picture and uh, to know whether it was China or, or Tibet. Um, but they're wearing splinted body armor. Um, the horse has has some some sort of fabric coverings as well. So very very interesting, very beautiful. This is a um, like an ancient visiting card, so that you, they could make thousands for this um, this military training hall in the centre of Kathmandu. But that's been hand carved out of copper, so they can make thousands and thousands of the same design. This is part of the same group of four for the same location, but this is a, a wooden wooden version. So you can see this is where the, the actual print is in the positive. Um, a little bit like a sort of super high relief um, uh, etching block where you, you, you acid etch around, but in this case they've carved it out from a block of copper. Um, this is from the Terai area of from North India, a very flattened space where the characters are, um, in this case Krishna and the gopis, so all his, his female followers who are all falling in love with him with his flute playing. It's a very flattened use of space, um, very pattern-like. Then you've got a couple of different spatial things, so this is a, a Chinese design possibly carved in Nepal, although it could, could also have come from China, um, of the seven immortals. And you see this, this Chinese or Oriental use of diagonal space, where the Tibetans and the Nepali have a much more frontal um, use of space. Um, I mean, actually, as a historical piece, it's, quite, it's now quite interesting. So. It's, you, and you can see it's 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 quite beautifully carved, but it doesn't have the same sophistication as the Chinese um, use of space. It's much more um, much more sort of flatter in the in the in the way that they've described the landscape, where the the Chinese use of space 
has this tremendous use of diagonals and of empty space. But um, very, very nice as an object. So just to recap, you would ink this up. So you'd have you'd ink up a roller and then you roll across. Then usually you would place this face down like that on a piece of uh, absorbent paper. So you want paper that doesn't have too much um, sort of bonding agent or glue in it. You want something that really takes the ink. That would be pressed down and then sometimes you tap it and then you roll on the back like that. Sometimes you can do it the other way as well where you put the paper on top and, and roll it. Um, but when you do it that way you tend to get a crease in the, the paper. So when I've printed I've always found it better to put the the block on top of the on top of the paper and then they would ink it again and, and so on and just to sort of recap the different types so you've got in here the carving the, is so that the the design is a positive and the empty space is a negative um, you can see with some of these textile blocks again that's a positive and the empty space is the negative but something like that is the other way around so the the design of the flower is actually the negative so that that bit wouldn't come out as printed and the, all the background here would be printed i hope you found that interesting and useful um, i'm making a, a series of um, youtube videos this year um, as an ongoing way of of uh, sharing a lot of knowledge about um, Nepali culture and Asian culture with a particular emphasis on shamanism and on ritual objects but as you can see verging into the into the arts as well I have a background in the art world making paintings and sculptures for the last 35 years so um, if there's anything you you'd like me to make videos about um, do get in touch uh, leave comments and uh, likes and share the video as much as possible and thank you and see you at the next one.